Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the second day of uh, the Innovation Challenge for Southern Africa on food security and agriculture, risk finance. And we uh, will start today um, uh, right on time. We have um, a full day. We have uh, eight candidates. And so we, we need to um, go through the day quite uh, quickly. I would like to uh, start by um, uh, um, some rules and information for everybody that it's in WebEx uh, connected to please mute if you are not talking. Uh, for those watching via YouTube uh, and you, if you want to leave a comment or a question and participate in the discussion in the chat, you will have to sign in using your Google account and then the chat function will be activated and we will be monitoring that account in case there is questions, comments uh, to bring them into the discussion. Um, and there you will you have the social media uh, on hashtag ag risk financing and then the World Bank uh, and Draper University's uh, handles in case you want to tweet um, about the, the event. So um, we'll start today by presenting our grand jury. Uh, we are very appreciative uh, to, to the five judges we have today in this uh, very distinguished uh, jury of experts. Um, we, I'm going to present each one of you and I would like each uh, judge to say hello so that I know that you can hear me and that we can hear you. Okay, so um, Gisela uh, uh, Boris Ayontun, uh, are you there Gisela? Yeah, I'm there, hello. Excellent. Um, so Gisla is um, with us at the World Bank. Uh, he's an agriculture economist. He works with us at the Agriculture Global Practice, and uh, he has extensive experience in research and development on climate change adaptation and food security in Africa. And his recent work investigates the impact of weather information on crop productivity and income. Uh, thank you, Gisela, for participating. Um, Ricky Negri, ne Ricky, can you hear us? Are you connected? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Very thank you very much. much. So, Ricky was born in Buenos Aires in 1973, and uh, his family is a farming family, uh, so he went to rural school and uh, he he was the former president of the National Service of Agri-Food and Health and Quality in Argentina and the former Secretary of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries in Argentina. Uh, he was also manager uh, for research and development uh, in an NGO farmer association called ACREA. Uh, so, Ricky, thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, we have now Jolene Dawson. Jolene, are you connected? Can you hear us? Yeah. Hi, Diego. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jolene. So, Jolene was uh, born and bred in South Africa. She's passionate about making farming profitable and helping Africa feed herself um, as well as the world. She's a microbiologist by training and, and uh, she has 18 years of experience in relevant fields uh, and industries. And Jolene, I understand now you're with Accenture, correct? Correct. I work with Accenture Development Partnerships, uh, leading all the work that we do in agriculture across the world. Excellent, Jolene. Thank you for joining. Um, so then we have uh, Naomi Sakani. Naomi, I saw you. you. You can hear us, right? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent. So she works on international development as well with uh, passion for agriculture and rural development, and she has practical and theoretical experience in every food sector, uh, including agronomy and crop modeling for decision making uh, and she has worked extensively with uh, smallholders uh, farmers and, and pastoralists in 17 countries across sub-saharan africa and uh, before joining the bank um, she worked uh, in agriculture research and policy 
and supporting four C CGIAR centers, including IFRI for about 12 years. Um, and she works with public and private sector partners um, doing very innovative projects. She has a PhD in plant production system uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, thank you, Naomi, for joining. Uh, Luis de la Plaza. Luis, are you there? Yes, good morning, everybody. Great. So Luis is our lead financial officer at the World Bank uh, in our Treasury Department, uh, where he has worked for 17 years uh, doing work on customized financial solutions uh, for clients in different sectors, including infrastructure, energy, um, and disaster risk financing. Uh, and before the bank, he was uh, held various positions like director at ABNM AMRO, Rothschild, head of Asian equity uh, at, uh, at JP Morgan, vice, vice president uh, of the derivatives and corporate finance in Madrid, uh, New York, London, and Hong Kong. So uh, he's had lots of experience on financial instruments, which is very important also for us today. And he has a PhD in financial economics from the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. And I just, I would just like to mention, sorry, today is my birthday, 57th. Ah, okay. Happy birthday to me. Just mention it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Luis. What a better way to say your birthday. Thanks for joining, Luis. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. Um, and uh, we uh, will start with Fremke uh, uh, today. Uh, Fremke uh, is uh, in the Netherlands and uh, she works for um, the full Army Warm Alert Service uh, at uh, Satelligence. Um, so without further ado, Fremke, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to let you share yours. And once you start uh, your presentation, uh, we'll start the clock. So over to you, Femke. Great. Thank you. I'm just, uh, we have practice, but I'm just trying to see how I can share my screen again. There, there is uh, a button um, in, the, in the middle of your screen uh, that, that should allow you to share your content. Let me see. It's next to the mute button. Yeah, video button. I got it. It's, yeah, wonderful. Great. Yeah, we can see your screen. Uh, yeah. And just make your slides bigger. You can exactly. See. All right. Can you see it? Yep, we can see it. Yeah. Great. Uh, then I will start. So yeah, thank you for, uh, for having me here. I'm here together with my colleague, Arjen Freelink. Uh, my name is Femke Decker and um, yeah, I'm very excited to take part in the Agricultural Innovation Challenge. Uh, so I'm working for Satelligence. Uh, I'm based actually not in the Netherlands, but in Ghana, in Accra. And Satelligence is a satellite-based geo-analytics uh, company. And uh, we are actually making earth observations uh, more uh, beneficial to society and the environment. We're based in the Netherlands, but we have worldwide presence and we work with many organizations and companies to help them make better decisions in agricultural production and their supply chain by pinpointing the highest risk areas. So today I would like to talk about how we use geodata to fight the fall army worm in Africa. So what I would like to present to you Akria. She's a maize farmer, and for some time now she has um, she has discovered large holes in her maize uh, plants, and she has also experienced a de decrease of her yields for about 21 percent. So she knows this is because of the fall army worm, but what she, what she doesn't know is when the fall army worm actually attacks because it comes and goes. There's many more farmers like Akia because fall army worm is damaging most of the maize crops. Um, and that is actually the main staple food for more than 300 million farmers. This is a huge problem. The spread, uh, the, the pest spreads really fast. Uh, because it flies on nocturnal winds and nobody really knows where the largest risk areas are and nobody knows when exactly the fall army worm will strike. But what we do know is that the fall army worm will stay, so we better be prepared. So our solution is helping to reach out to farmers through mobile technology and alerting them whether there will be risk uh, in their farms of fall army worm. 
Now, how do we do that? We work with our data partner, Weather Impact, and we have developed a risk map. Uh, what goes into this risk map? First, we work with fall armyworm observations to the FAO uh, field data collection app. Weather and wind forecast, the second one. And the third one is a land cover uh, map based on maize, which is the, uh, called the impact map. So on the basis of that, we have developed a risk uh, map and we can understand the percentage of risk. By uh, calculating probability times impact, uh, we know the level of risk. So the percentage on district level is calculated uh, or is translated into low, medium, high, uh, very high, which is easier to understand. Now, the question, of course, is how do we get this information to farmers like Akia? We are working with mobile technology. Um, and this risk map has actually been translated into easy to understand messages and these messages are disseminated to farmers by using uh, uh, interactive voice response because we do know that farmers often don't have the luxury to buy smartphones there's no connectivity or they even cannot read and write so these messages are disseminated by a soco or local partner and um, Isoko has a large is making large impact on smallholder farmers by sending them useful messages to mobile technology. They have a large field presence and operating in many African countries. Fall army worm forecast has not been done before as far as we know. Uh, we have done a pilot in Ghana and eager to uh, scale to other African countries. Uh, the pilot has been implemented with about uh, 1,300 farmers and they have been sent weekly voice messages in about 15 languages. Our end survey has uh, revealed that our service is easy to understand, it's useful and very accurate. But what is actually the value of this service? So we do we, we know that the farmers find the messages very important. However, we also understand that the capacity to purchase this service is often low. So we think the main opportunity is uh, for us is, is in collaborating with the private sector, such as agro input providers, financial institutions, or platform providers. We have already discussed, um, there's ongoing discussions with them. So we think we have an innovative product because it's our product saves yield, is easy to bundle with other services and very scale, scalable due to the geodata component. But what about costs? So we are thinking of launching with, as a, a, with a direct sales subscription where partners can actually pay per region and per year. Um, this challenge is actually giving us the opportunity to expand and strengthen our network. And we all would like to uh, get in touch with us uh, because we are releasing a demo where this service will be part as a bundle service as from 15th of May. Femke, thank you. Um, uh, your, your time is up and I think that um, that was a good uh, final, final message. Um, you can now catch up with anything that that um, you wanted to say in the Q and A as well. So I'm going to start with uh, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, over to you uh, for the question or questions if you want to ask uh, to. Uh, I'm thank you. First, first of all, thank you. For, it's, I really like the project. I have a uh, lot of interest because we are dealing with army worms for several years in South America. We know a lot of, about that. My question is uh, how you can uh, prove or test physical uh, presence of, of, the, of the adults, especially because it's the only way that you can uh, get ahead of the, of the whole process. How you, how you measure in the fields, in the plots, or in the towns, I don't know how, how it works at locally. Um, okay, so then I'll move to Luis. Luis, do you have any questions for Femke? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, fascinating. I'm not an expert on, on, on this, but it, it's, it, it looks and it feels really good. A very simple question. How easy or how difficult will, is this? Is this possible to scale this up to not only other regions of the world, but maybe other pests? Uh, you know, I think some of the input, the weather input will be very similar, but then you can then start and I'm thinking we can use other pests of the places. So a very simple question, but I, I, I would like an answer if, if that's possible. Thank you. 
MK, you want to take those two and then we go to other judges? Sure, yeah, I have to unmute myself. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for these questions. Uh, I think uh, the first one was related to how do we uh, actually do, do the field measuring. Uh, we ourselves don't do that. We work with the FAO uh, field observation app, uh, FAWAMS. Uh, there's a web application. Uh, this has been organized, uh, I believe, worldwide, where uh, fall army worm detection will be um, uh, collected and uploaded on the on the on a platform and we use that platform uh, as input for uh, for our model um, and uh, there's different ways of scouting and monitoring the fall army worm um, what we do know is that the mob flies so we are actually um, not uh, scouting the, the larve or the eggs that's done on the field, but what we look at is the flying uh, possibilities of the mod itself. Um, I don't know if that answer answers your question, uh, Ricardo. Yes, thank you very much. It's just to understand the whole pro the whole process because it means the the the, the price and uh, all the business is based on on uh, how much goes to get information. Sure. Uh, just to add that we are also able to do that without observations. So then we are looking at the likelihood of the conditions um, of the of the fall army worm. Uh, but we can go into that later, or you can uh, check out our, our demo. Uh, Luis, in terms of the second question, um, I think you were asking about scale. It's rather unfortunate, but my slide just got cut off. Uh, we have done a pilot in Ghana indeed. Uh, and due to the geodata component, which is globally available, we are easy. Uh, it's easy to scale our service. We do have uh, local presence in, for example, Tanzania, and we're looking at scaling to Malawi, Tanzania and, uh, and uh, Angola. Our partner Weather Impact has also a large presence. Uh, in African countries, so that is uh, that is very easily done. And besides, we automate the process, which means that uh, yeah, we have our input, we automate the process, and we can actually scale worldwide. We have already, uh, and then I conclude the question: have requests from uh, from uh, Southeast Asia um, to uh, to actually also implement the service over there. Uh, thanks, Femke. And if you want to answer to any of the judges using slides, you can just share your screen again. Please oh, feel yeah. free. All right. Um, uh, so we go to Naomi. Naomi, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for such an insightful presentation. And uh, well, my question is on the data because you said that you are using uh, data on land cover, land cover data. I don't know how precise, how accurate are the data you are using. And again, well, a country like Ghana, and again, depending on the season, the coverage might also cause, you know, cause a problem. The satellite satellite co coverage might, might, might cause a problem on the accuracy of the data. That's my first uh, question. And uh, the second question is still on, it's on the affordability because I know you and uh, I don't if you can give us a range of price like how much does it cost even if it's in Ghana shillings at least or in you can uh, in, or in in US dollars and uh, my third question is uh, on the time because how long does it take how long does it take for you to forecast you know from the beginning to the release of the product how long does it take if you want to move to another country, we need to know how long does it take so that we can plan accordingly. Thank you. So, so there you have three questions. Femke, over to you. Wow. Uh, I hope I can answer them all, uh, all in, uh, in this time uh, frame. So thank you very much, Naomi. I think the questions are very valuable. Um, so actually looking at the accuracy of the data, uh, you're very much right. Uh, we are using uh, different satellites, which means that we use radar and optical. Um, so radar, we always say we can see through the clouds, which means that uh, in the tropical areas, like for example in Ghana, uh, this is very difficult, but we have been able to manage that uh, by using radar 
satellites. Um, so that is uh, very much an advantage uh, for us to work in this area. In terms of um, spatial um, uh, resolution, um, this model is based on a thousand uh, meters, I believe. We can scale down to 250 meters. Uh, but the strength of this uh, service is actually lying on landscape forecasting and not so much on precision forecasting. So you can see it a bit as, for example, um, um, yeah, whether there will be rain or not on, on a larger scale. Um, so that is actually um, the advantage of this service. In terms of scaling, uh, like I said, the data is globally available. We automate it. Uh, we can deploy it within, for example, one week. Um, so that is very easy to do. Uh, in terms of accurate weather data, uh, we work with a system that gives us um, accurate weather data uh, every two days, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I think affordability also very important. Uh, we have done the survey uh, with our um, in, in, in our pilot with farmers in Ghana. Actually, it was surprising that they're willing to pay. This will be about one to five Ghana CD, which is per month, which is about a euro per month. Of course, in terms of revenue and, 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 and our growth, uh, yeah, this might be a challenge. It's interesting for, for example, policymakers and, and, and in combination with the private sector, how we can further develop. But there is willingness because the service was seen as very, very valuable. Uh, in terms of working with the private sector, we are thinking of um, having a subscription model or uh, maybe a shared revenue model. Uh, so there is actually different options uh, on that. I hope I answered your questions. Thanks, uh, Femke. So we Thank have you. more judges uh, wanting to ask questions. So we have uh, Zisla. Over to you. Yes. Thanks for your impressive presentation. It was amazing. I really like it. But I have two questions. You know, in developing countries, to make your project work, you need to involve local partners. So can you please elaborate on how you intend to involve local partners in your project? And my second question is about cost. We use uh, a lot of data from secondary sources. If the bank was to invest in your project, what will be the key driver of this investment? What will drive us to invest in your project? And my third question is uh, about um, feedback. Can you state a bit uh, your feedback that you get from your earliest adopters? And apart from these earliest adopters, do other follow-up give, give, give you some further feedbacks? We want to hear from you about that. Thanks, Gisela. Uh, Jolene, do you want to ask your questions? Thank you. Yes, um, my question is a fairly straightforward one. It's related to the local partners. You mentioned that you're working currently with Isoko um, and you're wanting to scale to Tanzania and Malawi. How are you actually going to deliver the service? Um, does Isoko have coverage there? And if not, how are you planning on getting a local partner to do the dissemination of the information for you? Thanks, uh, Jolene. So, Femke, over to you. All right, four more questions. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, so, yeah, I think two are related to uh, the local partner that we are working with. Um, yeah, we have chosen for Isoko because of their large presence in Ghana, and they're also active in 10 other African countries. Uh, I know they have an office in Tanzania. Uh, so for, in that regard, it would be uh, would be possible to, uh, to con continue working with them. However, we mentioned also other platform providers, meaning that we can reach out to different uh, um, yeah, operational platform providers that have field presence. I know this is more and more happening. You can see it, for example, One Acre Fund in Rwanda. You can see it at Farmaline here in Ghana. So there's more and more knowledge and, and understanding that we have to combine these services with actually local presence in the field to make it work. Um, I think our strength is that we are very much a networking organization a networking company. So, um, yeah, we do have uh, contacts uh, everywhere, We, ha of, at, at least in a lot of, uh, of countries. Uh, we can always strengthen that and we have a colleague uh, who is based in Tanzania at the moment. Uh, but I think it's very valuable to mention that and it's definitely something that we uh, are incorporating into our uh, scale model uh, because together we can uh, make this service uh, um, strong and therefore we need partners. Uh, in terms of um, yeah, data and cost, um, yeah, I think because of the automatization and because of the global availability of the of the data, uh, the cost can be kept low. Uh, also, the marginal cost because if we have 
uh, one one product we can easily scale the model works in uh, in different countries if not we do need some uh, input for for the model to to be trained but in fact this can be uh, sorry for my pop up uh, this can be um, yeah done quite easily um Maybe Aryan can also add to that, my colleague, uh, who has been silent for some time, but uh, he can always add to that. Uh, but I quickly want to, uh, to, to go into the two other questions before my time is up. Uh, so in terms of investments, um, yeah, I think um, working with the private sector is, uh, is for us, um, yeah, the best way to drive to make the service actually sustainable. Uh, and the cost will be, um, I think, more in terms of, um, uh, deployment uh, in, in other countries and the revenue model by, uh, for example, subscriptions to uh, the market is really big. There's many farmers. Uh, there's many farmers actually um, uh, worldwide having a lot of difficulties with uh, with fall army warm. And uh, by investing, you can cover a, a, a large market, which can, for example, for financial institutions be relevant in terms of um, uh, crop insurance, financial um, um, services such as loans, monitoring, uh, re repayment schedules, and for agri, uh, agri input providers and agricultural companies in terms of market insights, offset of their products. Um, so I think there's a lot of collaboration possible. Uh, the operational costs are low uh, and that makes it also very interesting to invest in. Um, then I think on feedback, uh, for us, it was, it was very important to gather feedback of the end users to see whether the, the service is actually working. Because before you get in touch with uh, your, your paying uh, clients, it's very important, and particularly with, um, with a service like this, to actually show your added value. Is the service working or not? And what is the feedback? Uh, so that is what we have done by the pilot working with Isoka, which was very, very useful. Um, we have um, implemented it with about 1,300 farmers. We got their feedback through a survey, mobile survey, uh, but also face-to-face -face contact because, uh, yeah, for us it was very, very important to get that feedback. Uh, and I think that is still needed. So in the growth, also to other um, um, to other countries, feedback mechanisms are needed to to strengthen such a service. Um, so I hope. Uh, Gisla and Jolene, I have answered your questions, and if there are some doubts, maybe Arjen can also add. Arjen, do, do you want to add anything? You okay? I don't think we can hear Arjen. Arjen. Okay. You're on mute, Arjen. We have we have one uh, one more minute. I want to know if any judge has any follow up question. Last minute question now. I'd just like to understand the achievements of the team um, that is going to be delivering this. So yourself, MK and Arian, even though we can't hear him, so you're going to have to speak on his behalf. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very useful one. Arian is the director of Satelligence. Myself, I'm uh, I'm having quite some experience with work working with uh, small scale farmers here in Ghana, uh, but also in other West African countries. Uh, we our team has um, our data science team, engineering team is based in uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, we have many of us uh, that have done PhDs or experience in the field either in Africa or Southeast Asia. Uh, the same goes actually for our partner Weather Impact. Uh, they are very. They're having a large track record in forecasting um, on the African continent, uh, which is very important in this regard. Uh, and of course, the, the strength in working with local partners is very, very important for us. Uh, we also do that in our other regular services, uh, expanding on network, and that's also the reason why I'm working here from Ghana. Uh, and that's the same for our other colleagues who are uh, working in the fields in Southeast Asia, Latin America. Um, yeah, so I think in terms of expertise, we collaborate with a lot of uh, high standing universities, Wageningen, uh, Naomi, I've seen you, uh, you've been <laughs> involved there, uh, but also Rothamstedt and of course Kabi. Okay, Femke, thanks very much. The 15 minutes are, are up. Uh, we would like to thank you and congratulate, uh, congratulate you for having made it to this final round. We will be sending you a certificate uh, as a top innovator um, and uh, yeah, watch out for the results uh, on Monday. We'll be announcing the results and uh, best of luck and uh, 
we'll, we'll now uh, take a, a two minute break uh, for the judges to, uh, to get up, stretch. Uh, we'll, uh, in the meantime, show a video by the president, uh, the founder of uh, Draper University has some words for the innovators today and, and we'll start in two minutes. Thank you. Hi, Hi, I'm Tim, Tim Draper. Draper. Um, um, I, I'd like to thank the World Bank for putting on this amazing agritech competition. I think um, agritech is absolutely critical for the world, particularly today. Uh, we're experiencing this global crisis in so many ways. Uh, having local agriculture, local food sources, uh, it becomes more and more relevant to all of us. Uh, this is an exciting time and, uh, and an interesting time when, uh, when the world kind of gets a reset. And, uh, and during this reset, uh, you as entrepreneurs can set the course for the future. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the great things that are coming out of this agritech competition. Um, thank you, Marem. Thank you, World Bank. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not there to see them, but I will get a chance to look them over uh, at my leisure. Uh, I, I wish you all the best. Go, go out there, make something really extraordinary happen. Do it with gusto and enthusiasm. Okay, very good. Uh, so now we are going to move to our second uh, candidate of the day. Uh, we have with us uh, Nessie, who's the CEO and founder of Sailog, uh, based in Israel. Uh, and uh, we are going to uh, allow Nessie his five minutes of pitch and then uh, 15 minutes of, of Q&A. Uh, Nessie, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen uh, and you'll start sharing your screen and when you start your presentation, we'll begin the clock. Over to you. Okay. So thank you for selecting us. Let me know when you see the screen. Yeah, we can see your screen um, and uh, yep, it's... Oh, well, let's start. Silog is a startup company from Tel Aviv. And what we are trying to solve is the problem that there are not enough extension officers around the world that can support farmers. Due to that, 40% of the yield is being lost to diseases, pests, nutrition, and deficiency. And we came with a scalable solution that can provide support to the farmer. The core technology is quite simple. It's a smartphone application that allows the farmer to take a picture. And we immediately provide with the identification of the problem and also with treatment protocols. Since we started, 200,000 uh, installations of the app and one and a half million images were already being uh, diagnosed. But it's more uh, a management solution for the entire challenge of uh, uh, plant protection, not just uh, the identification process. And let me show you how it works. Agrio is the world's first digital management platform that streamlines the entire crop protection workflow to help organizations reduce operational inefficiency and costs. With Agrio, scouting routes are optimized based on real-time assessments and automatically assigned to inspectors who can easily access the day's briefing from the Agrio app. Powered by artificial intelligence, the Agrio app identifies crop anomalies, so farmers and inspectors can snap a photo, diagnose what's wrong, and get treatment recommendations instantly, allowing even inexperienced inspectors to generate professional plant protection reports quickly and accurately. Agrio also helps to prevent damages with Agrio Shield, the first ever AI based alert system that predicts the spread of pests and diseases, providing alerts and precaution suggestions so users can monitor high risk locations and take preventative measures when it counts. 
and all that information is shared in Workgroup, a private and secure platform that streamlines internal communication across your organization and allowing teams to collaborate and organizations to record, organize, and manage crop protection activities, including offering their own input products and protection advice. And for the first time, large-scale plant protection operations can be managed effortlessly in Dashboard where supervisors can monitor work group in real time, track productivity, assign tasks, manage alerts, set protocols, and explore AI-powered analytics to uncover insights and ensure your business is growing in the right direction. This is the future of crop protection. Okay. Uh, I be get back to the presentation. Okay, we have uh, users all around the world. Uh, you can see that also in uh, South Africa, we are uh, supporting 16 different uh, languages. And as you saw in the uh, video, we have uh, a lot of emphasis on uh, prevention and uh, predictions using uh, remote sensing uh, data, like uh, satellite images. And in this case, uh, we are also using the Sentinel-2, uh, which is open uh, data that everyone can uh, use in order to predict the spread of uh, diseases. Um, our unique positioning is that in the moment that we identify anomaly in remote sensing uh, imagery, we can send a user to take uh, image with uh, high resolution. And this is how we are making, uh, we're labeling uh, satellite images with uh, high accuracy. One of our successes was when we worked with uh, the American government monitoring the fall army worm spread in Africa, and we were, we were predicting uh, the invasion of the fall army worm to Asia. And indeed, in 2018, we got this image from South India, in which the AI system identified that it's the fall army worm. We sent uh, tens of thousands of alerts to farmers in the continent, allowing them uh, to know what kind of uh, treatment they need to take. We have two business models. One is that the B2C, farmers can download the app in the App Store and uh, use it for free. They are paying a premium for uh, features like alerts. And the B2B in which we are selling the SaaS uh, package for organization. Uh, for example, we are working with uh, food producers, cooperatives, NGOs. One example is the Mexican farming cooperative that is uh, growing corn, and we are ser serving more than 1,000 uh, members of the organization with all the plant protection activity. The team include technology experts, uh, business, uh, agronomy, and uh, design experts. And we are already partnered with uh, key players in this uh, area, like uh, Syngenta, Ecom, the World Economic Forum, and we were part of the Google for Startup Residency program in 2018. That's it. Great, thank you very much. And um, uh, we will now pass to the uh, Q&A session. Um, Nessie, if you want to uh, use slides during your answers, you can bring them up again if you want. Okay. Uh, Luis de la Plaza, uh, over to you for the first questions. Uh, I sorry, I don't have any questions at this stage. I think it's very comprehensive the the, the presentation that they have given. I may I may come back. Okay, if, if that is okay. Very good, Naomi. Well, thank you very much for such a, an insightful presentation. I have a question on the the data quality. And. Yes, you said you mentioned that you are using satellite data. I would like to know which kind of data or the source where you are sourcing the data, the resolution of your satellite data imageries. And uh, the second one is that uh, when I read uh, the title of the presentation, mission uh, extension. So I would like to know whether you are able to partner with the uh, local extension or how you are planning to do that. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Naomi. Uh, we'll take one more question, Nessie, and, uh, from Gisela, uh, and then over to you. Gisela, uh, questions? Uh, yes. Uh, your technology works on in uh, Mexican conditions, but you know that in 
Southern Africa, we have two different, we have different conditions in terms of climate and even farming conditions. How can you scale up your technology to Southern African countries? That is my first question. About my second question, can you say something about uh, feedback from your earliest adopters? Because I've, we can see that you work with more than 1,000 farmers. So it may be relevant to give us some feedbacks. Thanks. Great, Nessie. So you have, a, a, I think, four first questions. Over to you. Nessie, you, you're in mute. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. For the uh, remote sensing uh, information, we are using satellite images, for example. We are using radar, uh, uh, weather radars. So everything that can allow us to predict the spread of uh, insects and also to see very early when there is a problem in the field. For example, we will see some kind of an anomaly in the satellite image and we will use it in order to instruct the extension officer to arrive to a specific uh, place. We are already in a stage in satellite images in which we can also classify the anomaly. And this is thanks to the fact that we have this a closed loop, something that stopped the academia for many years. The fact that there are not, uh, not enough agents in the ground that allows you to label a large amount of uh, remote sensing uh, data. We solved it by the way, by the fact that we are providing value to uh, farmers to go and take the picture for us. So we are outsourcing that. So we were, we're able to make uh, this progress. Regarding extension officers, uh, yes, we are uh, working, for example, with the Syngenta Foundation in India. And this is a model that we want to bring. We are working with Ecom in Vietnam. This is exactly the model that we want to bring to uh, Africa to partner with a local uh, entity that can be the boots on the ground. We think that it's uh, very important. It's not just uh, uh, technology regarding uh, localization, yes, of course, we have 200,000 users around the world in every continent, uh, almost in every country. So we are aware, we are, we are aware to the fact that we need to localize the insights. This is something that we are doing. We are offering a work group that allows you to uh, bring farmers and experts on the same platform, and those uh, two um, groups can discuss problems and it's not a fixed system so it's a learning system that can take all the insights from experts that we are bringing and uh, farmers and learn new things and of course i didn't mention it in the app in the presentation but we also localizing the product uh, recommendations so we have databases that we are creating if there is no regulation in the country we are creating the database if there is a regulation, we are connecting, for example, in Israel, we are connected to the agricultural ministry database. And in the moment that you identify a problem, we will also show you the list of products that is uh, approved by the government to be used uh, in, your, uh, in your area. Great. Uh, thank you, Nessie. And we'll move on now to Jolene. Thank you. I've got uh, just one clarifying question. Um, you were mentioning the fact that this is a smartphone based application and that you are very focused on doing B2B and then um, the SaaS service as well. In the African context, particularly in Southern Africa, um, about 80% of the farmers are smallholder farmers with feature phones. How do you plan to adjust for that? Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, Nessie, wait, hold on. Let me collect a, a couple of questions so that we're more efficient. Uh, Ricky? I have uh, lots of questions because this, the project is very interesting, but I'm uh, focusing two of them. Uh, how do you will have local partners to develop, especially local weeds and local insects that they are in the region? And the other question is not on the business model, it's in how to which are the needs of connectivity that you have with the system? Because in this region, it's not so uh, developed a, a, a communication network. Yes. yes. So I will try to answer all the questions. Uh, so regarding the uh, feature phones, yes. The, and some of the organizations that we are working with uh, are taking this solution just for the agents, just for the extension officers. 
This is one thing. So it's a, it's a way to manage the extension officer. But feature forms are not excluded. You can send us a, a MMS with the photo and we are able to support the SMS back with uh, information. It's also connecting uh, with the other question, which means that if you don't have uh, internet access, everything is offline. You can do everything offline and the moment that you connect to the internet, uh, we are syn uh, synchronizing all the information um, and many of the features will work without even uh, the, the sync. So many of the algorithms are on the phone itself. And, and yes, regarding uh, local partners, as I said, this is our uh, strategy. We are uh, going to work with NGOs, with agricultural in input suppliers, and allow them to manage uh, this operation uh, in a more sophisticated way. And this is what we did in uh, all the countries that we penetrate to. We just uh, found out who are the NGOs which are giving services already to the farmers, who are the agricultural and input suppliers that are working with the farmers, who are the, who are the cooperatives. We just give them a tool to do what they are already doing, just in a more effective way. Great, uh, Nancy. We, we have two more minutes, and, and we have uh, actually uh, two questions. One that comes from YouTube, um, from people watching. Um, I think it's similar to Ricky's, that there are several pests and diseases uh, that can account for the most common uh, sign of disease crop, uh, which is leaf uh, color change. And so they, they are asking how exactly Sailog ensures that the right diagnosis is done. Um, and uh, is are you relying solely on, on AI to do that? Um, and then, Ricky, you had an additional question? Yes, uh, my question is, is about data and who is the owner of data from the farmer? Because the farmer will pick a lot of, uh, put in the network a lot of information, his information, and it could be used as a, a business intelligence to sell products to them, or just to another sanitary service give not so good news about pests and and those things. So we, who is the owner of the information is the question. Um, uh, Nisi, uh, hold on one second. Uh, Luis, do you have a, a yes, question? Yes, a very, a very good Go question if you don't mind, because I'm, I'm, how, is, how sensitive is the model of the system for false negatives? A lot of pests look alike. Uh, a lot of insects are not necessarily a pest. So can the model adjust quickly uh, what may look so otherwise it may trigger a reaction that is uh, unwarranted because of those. Is, is there a way to, to measure how you guys look into that? Yeah, so it uh, connects also to the first question. We are trying to, to be a bit better than the average uh, agronomist. This is what we are trying to, to be. If we will be 100% one, one accurate, it's uh, much better, but we just need to be more, uh, better than the uh, uh, agronomist that already giving service to the farmer. It's it's true that there are many things that look uh, look alike. Uh, if uh, uh, if we can provide value to the farmer by, for example, distinguishing and saying it's it might be A or B, in order to uh, check if it's A or B, you need to do further tests uh, that uh, we can uh, specify. We already gave him uh, value. Uh, we it's it's better. For example, we are getting many images uh, in the app in which you will see that the farmers were about to uh, spray uh, a viral disease. Uh, the moment that you already tell the farmer it's a, vi a viral disease, maybe I don't know exactly what is the viral disease, but don't spray anything. Don't don't waste your uh, money. It's already a uh, value. So this is. Uh, uh, something that we are, I, I'm not uh, here to say that we are going to be 100% uh, accurate. Um, regarding the data and who owns the data, so it's not just the data. The, do, the data is going to be uh, to stay uh, with the farmer, with the farmer, uh, with the organization. And also, not just the data, also the uh, artificial intelligence that we are training. It's going to be based a lot on insights that are coming from experts and farmers. So this AI is going to be unique to every uh, group that we are working with. 
So if we are working with corn uh, growers in Mexico, they are not going to have the same AI hey, that the corn grower in South Africa has. Uh, so this is also a way to build a competitive advantage. If you think that you can uh, feed the system with better insight, you will have a better artificial intelligent uh, agronomist in your hand. Um, so I hope that uh, it answers uh, your question. Great. Uh, thank you. Nessie, any other uh, question from the panel? No? Yes, okay. I want to yeah. come back to local partners. So can we just summarize that you have still you still have to work to build your local partner relationship? Because it's like you only work in other areas, but not in Southern Africa. And in your statement, it's like you want to build a partnership, but it's not already there. Can we just summarize that? Oh, so, for example, we are working with Syngenta Foundation in uh, India. They are also active in uh, South Africa. And the moment that we uh, get funding in order to penetrate to a new uh, territory, we just arrive. Uh, we spend time with the farmers, with the organizations, with the NGOs, and we build the uh, a partnership. We are doing it right now in Ethiopia with an Israeli organization that is active there. This is something that we are already have experience with. It's something that we know how to do. Um, I guess that uh, I hope that uh, it answers your uh, question. Okay, thank you. Nessie, any other question or follow up? For Nessie? Are you testing how to, for example, certificate applications or something like that to be uh, closer to another business? Could be to certificate products for the, the final cons customer? Are you working on that? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean that if you have, a, uh, for example, these people from the cooperative in, in Mexico, if, he, every, if everybody has this platform and uh, put the inf their information and their applications there, they can certificate good practices, for example. So it, you have a, a new business in your in your own in the same model because you can certificate the, uh, the good practices, for example. Yeah, it's yeah. So we are talking with insurance companies uh, also on those things, but more than that, uh, um, with uh, insurance companies, with banks, for example, if I, uh, right now, if I give money to a farmer, I want him, uh, I want to be sure that he's going to buy the effective product and use good practices in order to pay me back after he finished the season, after he's harvesting. So yes, so in the long run, we see many things uh, getting connected to this uh, platform. But right now, since we are a startup company, we are very focused on solving this uh, plant protection uh, challenge. Excellent. Very good. So, so um, uh, Nessi, great job. Thanks again uh, for participating. Congratulations for making it to this stage. We'll be sending you a certificate for top innovator and look out for the results on Monday. Um, for the for the grand jury, we'll take a break and we'll start in exactly six minutes uh, again at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, in the meantime, during the break, we'll show um, a video with some of the interviews from last year's uh, challenge. Um, so we'll be back in, in five, six minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We are the team that is involved in the design and implementation of financial products in order for our clients to reduce the number of risks that they have, both in their economies and in areas like agriculture. Um, in terms of the first question, uh, it is very important to point out that the percentage of the population that actually works in the agricultural sector is fairly high in the Southern Africa region. And also it's very important to note that food security and independence is critical to any nation. A break in the uh, system has both social and economic implications, uh, and the impact, economic impact in particular, can lead to fiscal uh, imbalances. It can also lead to famine and/or social unrest. 
sustainability of the agriculture sector depends on access to the right crops and the information needed to define weather patterns and be prepared for the unforeseen events such as floods, droughts, etc. Creating mechanisms that provide a safety net to producers is key, but also the availability of insurance and risk transfer mechanisms so that uh, we can ensure that the resources are made available to prevent famine or have serious fiscal implications for governments. Uh, because that will be a, 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 a good option for them in order to keep and be able to, to maintain other development projects that are so important for governments and not just focus on one particular problem at a time. Our consortium is naturally driven to do projects of this nature. Global parametrics is a partnership. We are meant to crowd in markets in low and middle income countries and then to build resiliency. We partner with if priests total purpose is to focus on poverty and agricultural policies that will contribute to economic growth and reductions. In so it's a, it's a fantastic consortium. We've chosen to also work with the Mark Fox Supercomputers and Mentica, which is a new firm. So all in all, we have a very strong team, highly motivated business. Excited to do something. One of the things that we need to do to reduce uh, food security in the region uh, is, I mean, for one, we need a quicker response from the government. There is a lot of bureaucracy of the government uh, responding to some of those disasters. Uh, so, if we can have a better coordination uh, among the government departments from National Disaster Management Center and the National Treasury Department and we have a well completed uh, in the ministry and in the policy space, uh, we can do a lot of things much uh, better. We also need to be able to train our extension officers so that they can translate research into, uh, into practice. And this is done at this research therapy from the university for the center. So be translated uh, into, into practice. And um, again, we also need to train the farmers to the extension of some climate smart agriculture and techniques. These are ways for us to improve the level of food production in South Africa. The, 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 the important thing is that there is a lot of potential in Southern Africa. And if we can manage our food, and properly able to utilize the food. Asia, Southern Africa, to reduce poverty, to reduce hunger, nutrition. Thank you. My team, we are interested in supporting Southern Africa. And there's many opportunities there, both on the climate side, and also on the policy side, and also on the practice. We look at it as a nexus of those three elements. We get a better understanding of what can we explore to understand the climate dynamics and the impact. Rainfall, between rainfall events, and you better get what is done in order to better capture the voices of the most vulnerable populations that aren't usually included in the development of tools and other interfaces that governments could use to make decisions based on increased risk for food insecurity. When we're talking about opportunities, what can be done? Think of it. Think of it in, in a few different ways. However, the overarching theme is this idea of the difference between availability and use. There's a lot of data available, there's a lot of tools on some interfaces. But why are some used more than others? What, is, what are the governance structures that are currently in place? What are the systems that are currently in place? What is the what, what is the science that is being integrated into the decision making process now? What are the questions? These are the elements that we're trying to support by trying to identify before we move forward with saying, well, yes, uh, we need to improve the, the climate science side in these ways, or yes, we need to produce certain data sets in order to, to improve. We really want to get a better sense of 
what can be done to close the gap between availability of data and use of that data to improve decision making, lower the risk of Uh, and as an institution, um, we are kind of laser focused on, uh, as a development organization, laser focused on the SDGs. Um, but our practice in particular very much um, focused on the SDG 2, which is really trying to zero out uh, global hunger. Uh, quite a, quite a, a challenge. Um, if we think about uh, right now, uh, we're losing ground on that uh, rather than gaining ground. I think uh, in the past five years, uh, we have there's about another 35 million people uh, that are food insecure, uh, go to bed hungry. Um, it's really about increasing productivity, but also uh, figuring out how we can reduce losses and build resilience in agri agricultural uh, food production systems so that they're more um, capable of meeting the needs of a, a growing uh, global population. Uh, by 2050, we'll, we'll have another uh, I think it's about almost 10, 10 billion people on the planet. There's a lot of uh, mouths to feed. So it's really about adapting systems um, to be more climate resilient. Well, uh, a good question. I think that that's what we're here uh, to try to figure out with this innovation. Unfortunately, there is a smoking gun. That's a uh, I think uh, on first hand, we really need to bring better information um, and data uh, driven to stakeholders at all levels. Farmer production level, um, traders, uh, in market insurers, uh, and policy makers, so that we can best uh, solutions that can put in place ex ante on an ex ante basis. Uh, mitigation measures, production systems, food resilience, and livelihood systems. Um, and I think uh, also. Hey, ap apologies for, for the delay. Uh, we're going to uh, move on now to the uh, next uh, third candidate, uh, Muridur, um, who joins us uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, he's the team leader of um, Geo Potato. Um, uh, Muridur, can you hear us? Are, are you? Do we have uh, Midul or anybody from GeoPotato connected? Yes, I'm here. Yes, can great. You fine? Yes, we can hear you very well. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my uh, my screen, and you can start sharing yours. Whenever you are ready uh, to start, we'll we'll start the clock. Okay. Um, actually, uh, maybe you can uh, share yours, and I'm just not sure whether 
my sharing would work properly. Okay. Could I just? Um, yep. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, just to be on the safe side. I don't want any glitches. Hillary, do you want to share or do you want me to share? I can share the slides. I have them. One okay, second. Great. Yeah, just just let uh, Hillary know when you want her to change to the next slide. Okay, just let me know when you want to start. Okay. Uh, yeah, are we all in? Uh, are my colleagues here as well? I don't see them. Uh, they were actually here just a while ago. I want to make sure. Is Zawad and Mushfik, are they here? Hello? We can hear you. Yeah, we do. We okay. can hear you. Uh, so okay. uh, yeah. you can start whenever. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll I'll just start. I I think my colleagues are. Uh, they should be, on. Oh, they're saying that it's on break now. Uh, no, maybe they they're they're looking at the YouTube, uh, but they're not connected in the Webex. Okay, uh, let, let me just start. I don't want to waste more time. Okay, yeah. I think they'll talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I am Ridul Chaudhary. I'm the leader of the team Geo Potato. Um, and yeah, so so let me begin by sort of taking you to the to the reality of Rohim, as you can see in this picture, a typical potato farmer in Bangladesh. And because a lot of changes in climate, you know, weather patterns, disease patterns, they're all changing. Uh, so he faces a particularly difficult situation. Um, so, um, so, but there is a new kind of solution that is emerging called uh, precision technology, so which enables uh, uh, customized recommendations for Rohim based on local weather parameters uh, and so on. So our GeoPotato solution is basically an example of such a uh, solution. If you go to the next slide. Um, so, um, so going back to Rohin, uh, he is uh, essentially a potato farmer this season, and he faces the risk of large percentage of potatoes uh, you know, getting destroyed each year due to a disease called late blight. And the reason that late blight is so dangerous is that it spreads and destroys a large portion of crops in only 48 hours. So as a risk mitigation measure, Rohin tends to excessively use medicine and often in an untimely way. Uh, and this causes many negative consequences from the environment at large to safety concerns for, for all of us uh, if we love potatoes. But there is a solution, and, and, and that is basically what we are seeing in this slide, that many decades of research have basically shown that there are certain local climatic conditions which significantly increase the possibility of a late blight attack. So our predictive warning system essentially tracks those local parameters continuously using automated weather stations and satellite imagery. And with that data from individual farmers, we can give them very specific recommendation on the amount and timing of medicine uh, to be sprayed. Uh, so if, if you go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, so we have about 42,000, uh, now it's about 72,000 farmers subscribed to our services. And an independent control study was done by Wageningen University, which showed very, very positive results for farmers, with notable increase in yield while ensuring less money spent on medicine. Uh, another study uh, by, uh, by MIT spin off uh, research group named Precision Agriculture for Development has shown very high acceptance rate of the service by farmers. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, so so this, this is basically the study that I was talking about. So that study essentially showed that um, uh, that about 88% complied to the alert uh, and then about 98% farmers were satisfied. 
uh, and um, and, the, and and we actually had some sponsored ads tagged along with the recommendation. We also found that the likelihood of purchase of particular products increased by about 18%. If you go to the next slide, um, talk about the business model essentially. So, um, so uh, I mean, so our business model is, is not at all focused on generating revenues from, from potato farmers. Uh, so our business model is essentially based on the hypothesis that if we send a sponsored ad along with our recommendation, much like the sponsored ads of Google or Facebook, then there is a noticeable increase in purchase, an increase in the likelihood of purchase of that particular product, as, as we saw in that, um, that uh, last study. So, so our essentially, I mean, our business model is, is, is essentially focused on revenues from the companies which either sell products to them, such as medicine companies, or buy from them, such as potato chip producers. And our model shows that if we can provide the service to about 10 to 12,000 farmers at an operational cost of about, uh, as you can uh, see, in our, of about $8,250, um, then we essentially, um, that if we need to reach scale with farmers, then we essentially need about 0.68 uh, uh, cents per farmer. So, um, so for an ad-based revenue business model to kick in, we essentially need to reach scale with farmer subscription, and that is what we are uh, here to kind of uh, pitch here. So we are already in very advanced negotiations uh, with, with Bayer, so we already have subscribed to our service for, for the next two seasons. And we are also in advanced negotiations with Kellogg's, uh, which is a, a potato manufacturing company. Both of them are very large global multinationals working in farmer. So if we go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, so essentially, I mean, the pot, the potato uh, in South Africa is also a very, very big uh, 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 phenomenon. So, and then, and we we hope that we can um, you know, replicate this in Southern Africa as well. Uh, and then the scaling steps. I mean, then we can get in. Uh, Nidul, you uh, put mute. We are muted. Uh, if you can unmute and. Yep. No. Okay. Please keep going. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So if you, if you go to the next slide, so essentially our our partners here were, uh, you know, the University, Terrasphere is a weather uh, satellite company. Precision for Agriculture was our research partner. If you go to the next slide. Um, Essentially, this, this is the team, and you know, uh, and the strategy lead is Mufsitul Rahman, uh, and then the program manager is Kazi Zawad. I mean, they're both on the call, uh, and there are also other uh, people you know, from different disciplines I mean, who are essentially making this service possible. Great, uh, Mido, thank you very much. Uh, your five minutes are, are up. Um, uh, we would like to now start collecting a few questions from, from judges. We'll start with Naomi. Naomi, uh, any questions? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for this innovative uh, application. I have my first question is on the scalability. Um, for sure, potato is grown in South Africa, southern part of Africa, and you have Mission SIP, which I know very well. But I don't know if it's, if it's applicable or it can be adapted to like the main food crops in southern part of Africa, like maize. Yes, yes. sure, sure. So if, if, if it's adaptable, menu. no, excuse me, please. Yeah, if it's adaptable, no. And um, also talking about the data, you talked about automated weather data. And uh, I am wondering whether, how, how, if you can expand on how, how, how do you do that? Because given the conditions in Southern Africa, it's different from Bangladesh. And uh, on the, well, the budget, uh, I saw about less than $0.70 uh, per farmer, but I don't know, is it per year or per month? If you can uh, specify that, that would help on the affordability. And looking at your team composition, I didn't see any agronomists. You have someone on crop protection. I may be wrong. 
and also anyone on and how do you link to the extension extension agents or extension workers both in the public and in the private sector because you cannot succeed all alone so, so, so you have four questions there Mizu, over to you yeah can you hear me yeah, so, so I'll start on with the first question and then I'll uh, have my colleagues uh, take on the rest. So essentially, just to give you a background of how this service got created. So, so we were essentially funded by the government of Netherlands to, to customize this algorithm for Bangladesh. Uh, and our primary partners are, are based out of Netherlands, you know, and then Wageningen University uh, was the primary research partner. So, so I mean, this, this service is actually very, very popular and then very big Netherlands. Where I think more than 80% of the profit in the Netherlands are actually subscribed to a service like this. And Wageningen University, I mean, the team that essentially worked with us, they were actually very much involved in developing the service for Netherlands. So, so essentially, what we did was we customized the, the algorithms for Netherlands for the case of Bangladesh. So, so that was what the initial funding was for. Um, so, so I mean, essentially, I mean, essentially, I mean, the, the weather parameters, the logic, uh, those change. I mean, from region to region, those change. So, so I mean, they need to be adapted, they need to be tested uh, before it can be publicly rolled out. So, so right now we are at a stage where we can actually offer this as a commercial offering to different companies. But there was a was a, a kind of a process for uh, for customizing it for the case of of Bangladesh. Um, and in terms of scalability, I mean, as, as, you, as you were saying, so the scalability issue is that, you know, this service is actually quite uh, needed for a lot of companies, as I was saying, for two kinds of companies. One is the kind of companies which are selling uh, things to farmers. I mean, it can be feeds, it can be pesticides and so on. So for them, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's very much of a needed service because they want to uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, increase their trust uh, with these farmers. So it would be a very useful service for them to increase their trust base with the farmers. And the other kind of companies which would also be very interested are the companies which buy from these farmers. Uh, so essentially, you know, the potato manufacturing company, the chip manufacturing company, that's also I mean, potato products company. Um, so and then their fate is also somewhat tied with the farmers. I and mean, if the farmers do well, then these companies do well. So so that's how. These companies are tied up. The other kinds of companies which also may be interested are essentially the, the crop insurance companies. So, 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 I mean, the scalability of this service is actually uh, tied up with, with, with multiple uh, commercial opportunities. So, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, ask my colleague Mushfiq to kind of take on the questions regarding the financing. Um, yeah. And if we can go to the slide, I think it would be good. The slide on, on the finance. Do you have your colleague connected? Uh, do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm on the call. Can you hear me, please? Right. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, about the question on AWS, uh, it is automated weather station. Uh, so these are ground weather stations. Uh, so it uh, uh, went through several iterations of what kind of weather information we'll be using. So initially, we tried with uh, forecast models that are internationally available, uh, but uh, those didn't fit very well uh, with the algorithm. Then we decided to uh, rely solely on uh, automatic weather stations, which are grounded. So these are physical machines that are put on the ground, and these generate real-time weather information uh, to feed into the uh, algorithm or decision support tool. So does that answer your question on AWS? Yeah, yeah, I think she answered yes. Uh, so go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, and on the uh, question of finance, so uh, the figures that are shown here uh, is for one season per farmer uh, cost. Uh, this is purely uh, uh, based on cost. Uh, we need to provide the service per farmer in a season. So uh, potato is cultivated in Bangladesh. Uh, yeah, and there's one season for potato uh, throughout the year. So uh, one farmer can subscribe to, I mean, uh, the cost we have to incur uh, for providing service to one farmer in a season is 
one C set uh, cell. Uh, but uh, as Bibir was saying, uh, to develop the service, uh, we need to do certain researches, and there uh, there have been uh, an iterative process of using uh, multiple technologies, and uh, came up with the algorithm to fit into local circumstances. So that was a kind of costly process, but now uh, it has come to a point. If we uh, want to scale the service to other geographic locations within Bangladesh, uh, it is more of plug and play. Uh, we we'll just have to uh, establish more weather stations into new geogra geographies and onboard uh, new farmers uh, to our service. And regarding the extension, so as Midhul was saying, uh, it was a uh, joint effort initially. So we partnered with a uh, government agency uh, like uh, Agriculture Ex uh, Department of Agriculture Extension and also Inform Department of Agriculture Information Service. So uh, both of them were uh, instrumental in uh, getting farmers on board and get, uh, gaining the trust of farmers uh, to subscribe to the service. So this is uh, how we partnered with uh, government, relevant government agencies and this is how we reached out to farmers. But uh, gradually we developed our own uh, uh, kind of skills and connections with farmers so that uh, we developed certain uh, mechanisms and tools to uh, connect with farmers and onboard farmers ourselves as well over the time. Okay, thank you. We have um, uh, several judges still wanting to ask. So, um, uh, Gislain and then Jolie. Gislain, over to you. Use it much. Uh, Gislain, you're muted. If you can unmute and ask the question again. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. No, now you're muted again. You. Good, thanks. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, yeah. You use intelligence artificial for building up your technology. So I just want to know how your technology is different from others. If you take, for instance, even for these competitive projects, there are a lot of solutions on pest attacks in Africa and all over the world. So can you state something about how, how is it different, your solution, from others? Okay, very good. Uh, Jolene? Thank you. I've got... Um three questions, but I'm going to rationalize them to two. So I'm going to go back to the scale question. You very focused on potatoes and late blight. I want to understand, is it scalable to other crops and other diseases? That's number one. And number two is going back to your business um, model. Your revenue model is based on ad revenue. Um, in the Southern Africa market, you are likely going to have quite a different um, group of buyers and advertisers, how certain are you that you're going to get sufficient revenue to actually float your business um, in, in that space? Those are my two main questions. Thanks, Jolene. So, so you have um, a dual three questions. Over to you. Oshima, if you can start off. Yeah, uh, about how uh, what differentiates us from other available services in Africa and other regions. So uh, the strength lies in the strong uh, uh, research background of uh, the algorithm. It's not about the dissemination technology or how, how it works. It's more about uh, the years of research that had been put uh, uh, to, to come up to this algorithm. The person uh, that you see in the uh, uh, team of GeoPotato, he, he has been invested 20 years uh, into research for lead blight. So uh, the scientific research that uh, combines the whole solution is kind of what differentiates us from others. Uh, but I, I, not, I, I don't have much knowledge about uh, how the other solutions were uh, put together, but uh, I, I can concentrate on the strength we have uh, uh, on the part of GeoPotato. Hope that answers your question. Nidulbhai, over to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
so, so and then also, I mean, the question about uh, uh, the ad revenues of Southern Africa. So essentially, the ad revenue in Southern Africa is frankly a market that we have not looked at yet. Uh, but I guess that you know, in all markets, I mean, we would find these two kinds of, I mean, these three kinds of players. Essentially, companies which are trying to sell to the potato farmers, companies which are buying to the potato farmers from the potato farmers, and insurance companies. So I guess, I mean, essentially, I mean, if we do a market analysis of Southern Africa, we can we can possibly uh, you know find that you know there would be enough players in each of these uh, categories. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go over to Ricky now. Ricky, your questions. I, I have three short questions. Is what happens with the algorithm accuracy when uh, is, uh, when there is not so good climate network uh, from the region? Who makes the invest in terms of network and uh, meteorological uh, plants and information? And uh, the third one is. Uh, how many seasons you, do you do you need to develop the the accuracy that you, the farmers need to make decisions? Okay, Elise, do you have any questions? No questions for me. Thank you so much. Okay, over to you then, uh, Emudo. So uh, the satellite image processing is done directly from Netherlands, and it doesn't require uh, any depend. It doesn't doesn't have any dependency on local connectivity. Uh, for the data we collect from AWS, uh, uh, we do need uh, data connectivity from the field, uh, but the lead time is not very small. Like. Uh, uh, So what we recommend is in terms of 30, in a 32 day window. So for example, when we uh, recommend to spray certain fungicide, we say uh, by next three days, you need to do this. So the lead time for uh, taking an action on our uh, recommendation is not very small. So uh, whenever there's a connectivity and uh, 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 and uh, far farmers receive the information within this time time, time window. Uh, it should be sufficient. And uh, the, uh, about the algorithm, it took actually two two years or uh, two seasons uh, of iterations and experimenting uh, to finalize the algorithms. And uh, from the third season, uh, it, it is kind of very stable and uh, working very well. Okay, very good. Um, any other judge wants to ask a follow-up question? We have one minute left. Yes, oh, I do. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm coming back to the weather data because you said we have weather stations. And based on experience, I don't know if from your experience in southern part of Africa, like how many or how affordable would that be? How many weather stations you would have to uh, set up and, uh, you know, the data collection, how many web stations are, are you going to set up to be able to come up with something that is recommendable? Okay. So it depends on uh, the status of the terrain. So it is, if it is uh, kind of uh, uniform terrain, uh, then uh, you'd need, it, you'd require lesser number of weather stations. And uh, in terms of variety, there is a lot of variety in terms of uh, the expense of weather stations. There might be very expensive industry grade weather stations, but there are also cheaper options, uh, which you can avail from uh, either India or China. And even uh, we are also partnering with one local uh, sensor-based company uh, startup to develop our own weather stations at a cheaper cost. So uh, we are not out of options in terms of uh, weather stations when it comes to uh, cheaper options. Great. Uh, any other question? Um, if not, uh, uh, Midal and, and team, uh, thanks very much for your presentation today. Congratulations for making it to this stage. Um, we will be sending you your certificate of top innovator and, and please look out for the results next Monday. Um, we will take a, a one minute break to set up the next uh, candidate uh, and we will um, uh, start in exactly one minute. Uh, thanks again for, for participating. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Yep. Bye. <laughs>
So now we have the team from Taiwan. Uh, are, are they connected? We have the next candidate connected. Bojan, are, are, you, are you there? Great, excellent. Hello? Yes, how are you? So, so we have... Uh, we have a team from uh, Intelligent Full Army War Monitoring, um, which uh, is joining us from, from Taiwan. Um, I will um, uh, stop uh, sharing my screen um, and I will hand it over to you and you can start uh, the presentation whenever you are ready. Thanks for, for joining us. Over to you, Bojan, whenever you're ready. You get my screen? Yes, we're seeing your screen, and I think the presentation is coming up. Yes, it's there. You have five minutes. Go ahead. I just Can Yes, you may. Okay. Hello, everybody. Because of the COVID-19, so we have to wear the mask under the government yes. rules. <laughs> I'm Bo Jian Guo from Agronomy Department of National Zhongxin University in Taiwan. I'm going to make today's speech. Our team would like to propose intelligent monitoring analysis and the early warning system for four army wounds. In my following presentation, I will use the ability Duration FAW instead of for uh, Army War. Our team uh, also includes Professor Li Zhong Lu from Marketing Department of National uh, Zhongxi University and the Tano Secure in Corporation. This company has a lot of experience in precision and uh, intelligent agricultural related technology in Taiwan. Our team also assisted the government authority to solve the current agricultural problem and to develop planning programs for new generation farmers. Uh, this uh, slide uh, includes more detailed information about our team members. Uh, we know cultivating the good quality of the corn and the forage is the foundation of the local livestock farming because the cost of importing the forage, the foreign feed is high. This will reduce the competitiveness of a local livestock farming. The damage to corn and forage caused by FAW will also increase the cost of livestock farming. As we know, in uh, 2016, FAW was first detected in Central and uh, Western Africa. In uh, 2018, FAW has been detected in almost all African countries. This has shown that the life cycle can be completed in 30 days in summer. If the pest control action can be taken with three to seven days, the agricultural losses will be reduced by at least uh, 90%. And the amount of pesticide use will be reduced by more than 50%. We have already developed an effective way of alerting against FAW. We use the smart trap box with the filament to attract the male FAW. The bonus trap box can effectively uh, trap male FAW because the FAW can only enter but cannot uh, exit. And then we use the infrared sensor to accurately to account the number of a trap male uh, FAW. This information can be used to determine the when we have to spread pesticides and it can be used to accurately predict the FAW outbreak uh, period. The benefit, benefits for this strategy are 100% accurate alerting of FAW, reduce of uh, spreading by at least 30% using only two traps per hectare. Reduce the amount and the frequency of uh, spreading pesticides by more than 50%. Uh, we also propose to 
uh, build an early warning system to prevent uncontrolled FAW using the efficient low, low launch transmission, including uh, intelligent microwave station and smart care box. The cost of a one roller intelligent microwave station and the 10 smart chat boxes per square kilometer can be done to 20,000 US dollars after mass production. Uh, we also propose a, a cloud prediction system for the prevention and the control of the FAW using the AI technique to deal with the all collected data. After analysis, the farmer can only use the a uh, mobile app to prevent and control FAW as a dry time and the in time. How the business model applied to a South Africa Development Community SADC? Let's see the following approach. Out. We recommend uh, SADC set up a dedicated company. The SADC and the World Bank or YBC uh, invest in that company. Our team can license and tech, uh, license the technolo technology of the FFW control. Our team can provide a training course and provide the equipment and the agricultural materials. To build the control system, the system can provide FAW control for SADC. In summary, the company on the SADC can provide the outbreak period of a FAW prediction service, also can provide a prevention service and uh, use the LoLa van to transmit the uh, intelligent micro weather station and the smart uh, pheromone tracking data in deploying the FAW regional alert spot to monitor and uh, prevent the FAW. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a great presentation right on time. Um, so let me start uh, now with uh, Gislan. Gislan, do you have any uh, questions? Yes, I do. Thanks for this great presentation. But I still have some questions. First of all, I still do not get what your technology is actually. So please briefly describe your technology and what it's intending. A second question is about your data. What type of data did you use? Is it are they publicly available or not? And my third question is how do you intend to evolve local partners? It's still not it's still not clear in your descriptions. So you need to show how local partners will be involved so that to make your project successful. Thanks. Okay, very good. So you have three questions from Gislain. Over to you, uh, Taiwan. Okay, uh, I answered the second question uh, first. Uh, because we just, uh, uh, we have did some uh, pilot study uh, in Taiwan. Uh, we collect uh, local data for, the, for this uh, application. So uh, we try to uh, uh, apply this uh, data to the uh, South Africa and uh, try to validate the data and try to uh, train the data. And uh, I think uh, this uh, application, uh, we can uh, move to the different country. Let me add something about the data. As you can see, the equipment are behind us. These are the real system. These are real components in our system that we can use this equipment to uh, collect the data for the local weather condition. Then we can build the forecast model and to predict when FAW problem occurs. So we, we will know how to uh, use uh, uh, some uh, material to achieve uh, the test. Excellent. Uh, um, very good. Jolene, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Guys, great presentation. Um, I'm keen to understand from you, in terms of your business model, you mentioned partnering with SADC and having them deploy the LoRaWAN network and then selling a service. How do you envisage 
farmers or extension offices purchasing that and and you and making that affordable for farmers how do you envisage doing that okay let me let me collect uh, um, a couple more questions uh, ricky a simple question to add first of all i really like the project for me it's very interesting uh, who will pay for who will pay for the for the service who who will pay and how many seasons do you think that you need in in this region to make the the adjust for the the whole process how many seasons one two three or four seasons great so you have three questions one from jolene and two from uh, ricky over to you Thank you uh, for these uh, three questions. For the first question, business model. I think uh, what we suggest is that uh, first uh, to set up a demo site, demo farm uh, in uh, South Africa, and then uh, through the uh, World Bank uh, introduction to make uh, the local government or central government of that uh, country to cooperate with our uh, team. And then to collect, uh, to encourage the uh, local farmers to come to this uh, demo site to see how this uh, turnkey solution, turnkey system uh, works. And then we will be able to convince the local farmers uh, to use uh, this system to their farms. So in such a way, we will try also through a uh, World Bank uh, introduction to uh, link to the local good agriculture university and then uh, do research together in order uh, to make this uh, business uh, really uh, practical uh, in uh, South Africa. And the second question, who will pay the, 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 the money for the system? I think uh, once the government uh, is uh, involved uh, in, uh, in this cooperation, I think uh, part of the payment will from uh, the local government or central government of, the, of their uh, Africa, South Africa, country and also our uh, farmers uh, need to pay some. If farmers don't need to pay, only a government pay, that's our uh, uh, lessons that we got uh, in Taiwan. Then the farmers will not seriously uh, use uh, this system. And uh, number three, the question, how many seasons that we need? Actually, we already have all the data, all the experiments done in Taiwan. So we can uh, do it uh, immediately in uh, Africa. Great, uh, very good. Uh, we are going now to next judge. Uh, Luis, do you have any questions? Yes, a very quick question, great presentation. Uh, at one point in time, you mentioned some seed capital, uh, World Bank or venture capital. Can you give us an idea of uh, scale? Are we talking 1 million, 10 million, 100 million? Just to get an idea of, 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 of uh, financial requirement. Your voice, uh, story voice is not clear. Is it okay? I'll repeat again. Yeah, uh, Luis, can you speak up a little bit? Um... Yes, sorry. Can you guys hear me well? Yeah, now it's better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, in one of the slides, uh, uh, the presenters, by the way, great presentation, uh, they were mentioning seed capital needed, uh, World Bank, venture capital. Can you give us an idea of, of uh, how much are we talking about in pure financial terms? Thank you. Okay, good question. Uh, and Naomi, over to you. Do you have any questions? Yes, thank you so much for such an insightful presentation. And uh, I like it. it's very research based. And you mentioned that it's a pilot. So I am wondering if you can elaborate on your plan to disseminate this innovation thank you all right you have two questions over to you first, yeah, let me try to answer the first question uh, about investment actually we already uh, have all the systems uh, everything uh, here you can see uh, for this uh, equipment so we think that uh, the most important thing is to stop the farmers problem then money will come automatically because the investor, he then will come to us automatically try to invest. The money should not be an issue. So we don't uh, care how much money that we can get, but we think once we can solve the problem, and then magic will come, Christmas time will come. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, I think we have already uh, done the pattern study and we collect some kind of data I just mentioned before. And uh, uh, we try to uh, do the next step. But uh, I think uh, because we have uh, also have the uh, model, I think extend to the different countries, different areas. Uh, will be done in the future. And of course, uh, we have uh, AI algorithm already, AI programs already. So the learning speed will be very, will be uh, very quick. So once uh, we get the data uh, from uh, South Africa, then the, the models uh, should be uh, able to be built in a very short time. And then we will see what the result for the farmers harvest. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your answers. Um, any other questions from the judges? Any follow-ups? Okay. I think uh, your presentation and your answers were, were very clear. Uh, we thank you again. I know that there's a big time difference. Um, and uh, thanks very much for, for showing us your, your solutions. Uh, congratulations again for, for having made it to to the top uh, innovators, you will be uh, receiving a certificate and please stay tuned. Uh, we're planning to post the results on, on the website on Monday. Um, and uh, yeah, let's stay in touch. Very interesting uh, proposal. Thanks. We'll take, a, we'll take a, um, actually a 10 minute break and we'll be back at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time for, for the next candidate. Uh, and as an institution, um, we are kind of laser focused on, uh, as a development organization, laser focused on the SDGs. Um, but our practice in particular very much um, focused on the SDG2, which is really trying to zero out uh, global hunger. Uh, quite, a, quite a challenge. Um, if we think about uh, right now, uh, we're losing ground on that uh, rather than gaining ground. I think uh, in the past five years, uh, we have there's about another 35 million people uh, that are food insecure uh, go to bed hungry. Um, it's really about increasing productivity, but also uh, figuring out how we can reduce losses and build resilience in agri agricultural uh, food production systems so that they're more um, capable of meeting the needs of a, a growing uh, global population. Uh, by 2050, we'll, we'll have another I think it's about almost 10, 10 billion people on the planet. There's a lot of uh, mouths to feed. So it's really about adapting systems um, to be more climate resilient. Well, uh, a good question. I think that that's what we're here uh, to try to figure out what we're sending it into. I think uh, on the first hand, we really need to bring better information. Uh, on
in the region. We really need to, I think, as, as agriculture is already a risky endeavor, it's only getting riskier with climate change. We really need to figure out how to give them the information that we think a lot of legacy investments uh, back to, uh, building strong seed systems, um, um, good extension uh, so that they have soil practices, good farm practices, good forestry that can build systems and diverse things. Finally, I think there's a very strong opportunity to improve cooperation among different countries. As the scope of risks increase with climate change, I think there needs to be a broader, more systemic, more holistic systems that require uh, information sharing, that require resource sharing, um, and also policies that really meet the need so that trade to wherever it is produced can move across the region. So, uh, serve those areas, uh, areas that are short, um, and, and move away from these quantitative kind of uh, trade bans that really amplify the effects of first kinds of shots. Thank you.